Uh, the young right-hander from uh, Grand Rapids will be on the mound this afternoon for the Tigers, trying to stop their spin. And it'll be Louis to be Keon trying to keep Boston up on top. He's the veteran right-hander for the Red Sox. Paul Carey's here. My name's Ernie Harwell. We'll be back in one minute with the starting lineup. I've got to be some fingers, oil on my shoes. I'm always under the hood. But I wouldn't change places with anyone else, even if I could. I worked on every car, big and small, every kind of engine, too. And there's one thing that applies to them all, whether they're old or new. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are than champion. Champion's number one in the world, number one in your car. Some folks don't mind working in a big place, being part of a team. I prefer just me and that engine, nobody in between. Well, it's another sellout here at Fenway. All the uh, dates in this series will be sellouts. They had a capacity crowd of over 33,000 last night like about that many today and tomorrow they're going to try to pack even more into this uh, little ball yard in back bay in boston now the two pitches warming up the bullpens uh, back to back uh, out there in the deep right center field teon and rosemont taking their tune-up tosses and here's the man who's always warmed up and ready to go paul carey all right ernie thank you very much and a good afternoon from fenway park as the Red Sox and Tigers prepare for game two of the four-game weekend series, part of the big holiday weekend at least, the Tigers will be home to cap it off on Monday night when they take on the Baltimore Orioles on uh, Memorial Day. Well, the Red Sox won the opener last night 6-3 to three, as they remained all alone in first place in the American League East by one game over the New York Yankees. The Tigers dropping three games off the pace with their third straight loss and their fourth in five games on this road trip. Kind of the opposite of the last extended trip of the Tigers, which was a very successful jaw for the West. This time the Tigers have run into some outstanding pitching and the bats have been stilled somewhat. The bats that for the most part have carried the Tigers through the early going this season. Well, this afternoon we're going to have a rematch uh, the pitchers of the second game last Sunday in Detroit. You'll recall the Tigers won the opening game when Wilcox bested Bill Lee. Well, they rematched last night, and the win went to Lee that time. And uh, in the second game last Sunday, Dave Rosemuth started against Louis Tion. Well, Tion went all the way to record his second straight win, uh, but Rosemuth was not around for the finish. He lasted just four innings. Dave uh, saying afterward that he... Uh, also had some uh, tenderness in that shoulder once again. So it's really a, a kind of an iffy thing. Every time uh, Roseman is slated to pitch, it seems, uh, Dave has, uh, we're not quite sure whether he's ready to go, whether he's going to have some of that stiffness, some of that tenderness in the shoulder. Teot has been bothered by uh, injuries. He's had a couple of them that have set him behind uh, so far this season. He came up with an injured finger in an exhibition game against the Tigers. It happened when he ran to cover first base on a bouncer within the infield, and uh, he missed a, a couple of turns in spring training and, in fact, stayed behind when the season got underway. A team out they had hoped would be the starting pitcher for opening day, but he wasn't available. So this is just the sixth start of the year for Tiot, and, of course, his second against the Tigers. Against the Tigers in his career, he has been involved in 42 decisions, winning 25 of them. And while with the Red Sox, uh, he's just about even against Detroit. 12 wins and 11 defeats. The 25 victories, by the way, against the Tigers uh, represents the most of any active American League pitcher. Uh, Jim Palmer, as, uh, for instance, has but 16 over Detroit. So Tiot has more wins than any other pitcher active in the business now against a Detroit Tiger team. Well, we 
We've had some of the preliminaries here at the ballpark. Sherm Feller's already brought you the starting lineups. And we've had a lot of interviewing going on because uh, this game is just being beamed everywhere. Not only are the Boston and Detroit radio networks carrying the game, but the Boston and Detroit television networks and the NBC network is uh, considering this their prime game. So it's being delayed a little bit while uh, some of the pregame uh, duties are being taken care of. But we've had the interviewing down on the field and what have you. Jim Rice was... Uh, Certainly uh, the, the most favorite subject for the interviewers here today. Rice is just about leading in everything, with the exception of the batting average column. Rice is leading the league in home runs, runs batted in, total bases, slugging, runs scored, and the total hits. Uh, this young man is uh, well on his way to uh, being a superstar if he, not, if he isn't already. An example of his power came last night in the first inning when Rice sliced a line drive, but it stayed in the air long enough to get into the seats, slicing around the foul pole down the right field line. It was only hit about 315 feet. It looked like simply a foul ball that would go into the stands normally, and in Detroit it would have been in foul territory. It was that short a drive, but it, it was just kind of almost like a check swing by Rice as he was protecting the plate, and he wound up with a home run. And they were talking uh, before the ball game here in Boston today about the, the golfing feats of Jim Rice. Uh, Rice is, uh, does not profess to be a great golfer, but those who have played golf with Jim uh, are telling the stories of some of his tremendous drives. In fact, they've got something cooked up here in a short while in Boston where he's going to be competing against two of the all-time record holders for longest drives off a golf tee and they figure that he will run away with the contest. Uh, he did some golfing down in Myrtle Beach during the off season. Jim comes from that territory and he has become a legend in his time for his awesome drives. An example was uh, cited by Bill Crowley of the Red Sox PR director who was noting that uh, one time he was golfing and they were standing to tee off and uh, here came a ball over the green behind them and through their tee-off area. Somebody said that was a pretty lousy second shot for a 340-yard hole. Crowley said that wasn't the second shot. That was the tee-off drive by Jim Rice. So he has been known to, with a good bounce to get him 400 yards. And I can't believe that, but uh, at least that's the story of Bill Crowley. Let's check the starting lineups now for the visiting Tigers against Tion. Leading off playing center field will be Ron LaFleur. Batting second at second base, Lou Whitaker. Hitting third, the Tigers' designated batter, Rusty Staub. Batting fourth at first base, Jason Thompson. Hitting fifth in left field, Steve Kemp. Batting sixth, the catcher, Milt May. Hitting seventh, playing right field, Tim Cochran. Batting eighth at third base will be Phil Mankowski. And batting ninth, the Tiger shortstop today, Alan Trammell. For the Red Sox against the right-hander, Rosema, the leading off, playing it short, will be Rick Burleson. Batting second, the second baseman, Jerry Remy. Hitting third in left field, the legendary Jim Wright. Batting fourth, playing center field, while Fred Lynn has sits out the last day of his suspension, Carl Yastrzemski. Batting fifth, the catcher, Carlton Fisk. Hitting sixth at third will be Butch Hobson. Batting seventh at DH, Jack Brohammer. Batting eighth in right field, Dwight Evans. And batting ninth, first baseman, Fred Kendall. Well, the Red Sox have taken their defensive position. A trio, the last ones to come out, Rice, Teant, and Fisk. Umpires will line up this way today. Larry McCoy behind the plate. Steve Palermo at first. Don Denkinger at second. And Dave Phillips will be at third. Now we invite you to join us in listening to John Kiley play our national anthem.
Piot takes his final warm-up tosses, and before today's game begins, we'll pause for these messages. Pizza lovers, right now you can get a large round pizza from Little Caesars with anything you want on it for the price of an identical small pizza. That's right, a large round pizza with all the trimmings for the price of an identical small. Just bring in the special coupon you'll find in your local newspaper or TV book and they'll do the rest. Mouth-watering goodness at a special low price. No wonder pizza lovers everywhere love Little Caesars Pizza. Little Caesars Pizza, a winner any way you slice it. If you want variety, there's a family in for you. It's the winner, come in and see. Little Caesars Pizza, Little Caesars Pizza, a great tasting treat for you. Radio 76 salutes Bruce Galbraith, recently named director of the Interlochen Academy and chairman of the Michigan Youth Arts Festival, which was held last Saturday in Mount Pleasant. Congratulations, Bruce, from WJR Radio. Well, Louis Tiot, who now uh, says he is 37 years of age. There are those who figure he should add about a decade onto that uh, age. Ready to go against the Tigers out of Havana, Cuba. The whirling dervish coming into the contest with two wins and no defeats, trying to make it two in a row for himself and for the Red Sox over the Tigers. Ron LaFleur stepping into the batter's box. And as uh, we get underway, we've been told the temperature here in Boston a not too warm, uh, 65 degrees. Here for the play-by-play, -play, Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul. The four batting, uh, 268, four home runs, 17 runs batted in, and Louie Tion about ready to go to work. The windup by Louie, and the pitch is on the way. He takes a curve over for strike. Man of many, many different pitches, Louie Tion. That happened to be a slow curveball to start off the floor. Here it comes. There's a fastball, and it's blowing outside. A one and one to count on the Tiger leadoff man. Tigers trying to get even in this series. They lost last night in the opener. There'll be a double header tomorrow. And then the Tigers head home. Swinging a bounding ball to third. Hobson has it. Here's the throw to first. Got him. Hobson to Kendall. One away. And the batter will be Lou Whitaker. Whitaker batting 385 against Boston pitching so far this year. Then the top Tiger hitter against the Boston pitchers. His average against everybody is 338. No home runs and seven runs better than for Lou. Off here playing him around the left. The Red Sox have right and left. Yuskimski center, Evans and right. And they're playing Whitaker shallow. Hobson is in close at third base to the end of grass. The other infielders are back. And Tion, right hand's one of the plate. It's a strike on the outside corner. That was the fastball to Sweet Lou. Well, this is the sixth start of the year for Louis Tion. He beat the Tigers last time out, 9-3. to three. That was the second game of last Sunday. He beat Rosemont. Changeup, swung on and beaten foul over toward the Tiger dugout. Tion with more wins over the Tigers than any active American League pitcher. Strike two pitch to Whitaker. One out, nobody on first inning. Swing and a bounding ball to second. Remy has it. The flip over to Kendall. Two away. Two rather routine grounders to start off the Tigers. And here comes Rusty Stomp. Rusty Stomp. Rusty has moved his batting average up to 305. He has five home runs and 31 RBIs. Tied for third down the league and runs better than. Louis Tiant on the mound with the Boston. Two out, nobody on for the Tigers in the opening inning. The game is scoreless. Here's a curve. It stays high on Rusty. Ball one. Hobson at third. Burleson at short. Rennie at second. Kendall at first. 
Now the catcher is fit. There's a strike call, the breaking pitch. Thompson waits on deck for the Tigers. Here's the motion now and the pitch on the way. Fastball, he side-armed him. He seldom does uh, a bat against an opposite hitter, a left-hand batter. Two and one, the count on Staub. He cuts it, a bonding ball to short, cut off by Hobson. The third baseman guns it over to Kendall and the side retires. Go down one, two, three at the end of a half inning. Detroit nothing. Red Sox are coming to bat. The new Detroit News AM edition presents something for the jock and all of us. Sports insights from columns by the likes of Jerry Green and Mike O'Hara. Hot tips from our easy-to-read racing page. A summary of all sports in a new daily feature, appropriately titled, All Sports. And an inning-by-inning -inning rundown of most every Tiger game in our exclusive AM edition feature, Play-by-Play. -play. The new Detroit News AM edition at newsstands at 6.30 every morning. It's the first good news of the day. Reading the Detroit News AM edition can make you smarter. And from now until June 30th, richer. With a new game called Joker Poker. You play it like poker, with cards that appear Monday through Friday in the AM edition of the news. Two of a kind could win you $50. A royal flush, $5,000. Joker Poker. No purchase necessary. Rules and entries available through the Detroit News or in the new AM edition. Like they say, it's the first good news of the day. Only now, it's even more so. We'd like to send a special uh, greetings to Mario Muscat, one-time Tiger Bat Boy back in Detroit. Mario had an accident. And we hope he's up and at him real soon. Also, Mr. Del Rose, a longtime Tiger fan from Boyne Falls, Michigan, celebrating his 90th birthday on this date, and we send a special Tiger salute to him. No score last half of the first, Roseman. Trying to get the Tigers back on the correct track now, going to work. Rogers won two and lost two. This is his seventh start of the year, the second time against Boston. As we mentioned, Tiant and the Red Sox beat him in the second game last Sunday. Red Sox have been hot. They've won five of their last six. They've won 17 of their last 22 games. And they've had a great record in the month of May. 18 wins and six defeats go back a long time to find a better Red Sox record in May than that. Uh, back in 1946, when they won the American League pennant, oh, they won 21 and lost six in the month of May. Burleson will lead it off. He's hit uh, safely in uh, six straight games. Burleson, right-hand batter against Dave Rosma. Rosma, as you know, has had arm trouble off and on. Uh, it's, the pattern seems to go, go a few innings, and then his arm will step it up on him. He's trying to get loose out there now, shaking and stretching a little bit as Burleson uh, steps in to face him. And the tall right-hander looks up at the right-hand batter and goes into action. The pitch is swung on a bounding ball to the left of Trammell. He has it at short, fires over to first to Thompson. One pitch and one away. Jerry Remy stepping up. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Mark Avery drives the music home in the afternoon music hall Monday through Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock here on the Goodwill Station. WJR Detroit, Radio 76. Remy has a 12-game hitting streak on the line, hitting 291. And he takes a strike, a curve from the road. Remy without a home run, he socked in 16 runs. The high in batting streaks for him in his career and the high for the Red Sox this season. Here's a fly ball at the left field, deep going back as Kemp near the wall, and he has it in front of the scoreboard on the warning track. Remy sent him deep. 
And there are two down now for the Red Sox and Rice coming to bat. Leading in home runs. Leading the league in home runs. Leading the league in runs batted in. Right up there near the top in percentage. He's hitting 348. 16 home runs. 48 runs batted in. This is the 45th game for Boston. Right hand batting Rice the plate. And he takes the slider in for a strike. Rice has played in all 44 games. Here's the ball outside from the Rose, one and one. Trammell very deep at short, Mankowski back at third. Now Rosma kicks and deals, and Rice takes the strike. Got a slider over again. One ball and two strikes on Jim. Rosma into action, pitches, Rice takes, it is just outside on the chain. Carew leading the league in hitting with 382. Ron Jackson at 372. And then uh, Wright comes in third at 348. Now the 2-2 delivery on the way from Rosma. He takes the ball in close to the knees. That was a fastball. The Yankees lead Toronto at the end of one. one nothing. Cleveland, Baltimore, no score at the end of one. Wind up by Rosemont, the pitch is swung on and missed, he struck him out. The side out, one, two, three, and at the end of one, Detroit nothing, Boston nothing. Get your bat ready, you're up in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. Here's your pitch. Name the all-time home run champion. This one should be pretty easy, so why not relax over a cool, refreshing Labatt's blue? Well, fans, the answer is Hammerin' Hank Aaron. The prolific Aaron cracked 755 home runs before hanging up his cleats. But here's an interesting footnote. Aaron never hit more than 50 home runs in a single season. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt's. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. For beer at its finest, get your hands on Labatt's. It's Canada's number one beer, as fresh and crisp as where it comes from. This is Oscar Frenette with an invitation to Discover Detroit, mornings at 5.40 and 11.30, here on Radio 76, WJR Detroit. Tigers move into bat now. This game scoreless. The second inning at Boston. Louis Tiard against Dave Rosemont. Jason Thompson will lead off for the Tigers. Each team went out one, two, three in the opening inning. Tomorrow there'll be a doubleheader. Then the Tigers move on home to Tiger Stadium. Tomorrow Jack Billingham and Jim Slayton will pitch against Al Ripley and Jim Wright. And beginning Monday night, the Tigers will be home for a week. They'll start off with a family night contest against the Baltimore Orioles who are hot now. Baltimore in for Monday and Tuesday nights. Then Milwaukee comes in Wednesday and Thursday. And the Tigers entertain the Minnesota Twins over the weekend on Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon. Sunday is free jacket day when the Tigers battle the Twins. So we hope you'll be out at Tiger Stadium uh, with us and uh, see the Tigers in action. Here's Jason Thompson at the plate. 12 home runs. 307 batting average. 29 RBIs. Outfield deep and around to right on uh, Jason. He's not quite ready. Now uh, steps in there to face Louis Tion. The wind up by the Boston right-hander. The pitch is swung on and popped in the air. It is a foul ball down the third baseline. Fisk is under it. Has it for the out. One pitch and one away. Here's Steve Kemp still leading the league in walks with 40 in 40 games. 
Batting average, 293, a couple of home runs for Kemp, but 18 runs better than. Game is not yet seen a base runner. Milk May is waiting on deck. Kemp played uh, straight up by the outfielders. A few kind of misty clouds hanging around the ballpark. The uh, sun is out now. The wind's blowing those clouds away. Here's Teon's delivery to Kemp, and he takes the strike call. Now, Louis started him up for the slow curve. A master at mixing those pitches, Louis Teon. Not only that, but he's got all those different motions to throw at the hitter. Fastball is low on the count even one and one. Boston very excited about their Red Sox. Use the motion and they pitch on the way. A change up that gets over. The old hesitation. Gypsy do there by the senior from Cuba. One ball, two strikes, a count on Kemp. Jam him with a fastball, make it a 2-2 count on Steve. Tigers have lost their last three. That's the second time this year they've lost three straight. On this trip, they won only one and dropped four. Swing and a foul out of play. It'll be over the roof of the Tiger dugout. Fifth down to give the sign to Teon. Kemp waiting on the next delivery. It's a 2-2 pitch coming up to him, and here it is. He swings and fouls it away. That's just enough of that to keep it out of the mid of uh, Carlson Fisk. Tigers finished this game. It means that they've completed more than uh, one quarter of their 162-game schedule. Here's the motion in the 2-2 delivery. He took a ball outside. That was close. Low and away with a hook. Kemp hitting only 200 against Boston pitching so far. That's in the five games. Here's the full count deliver to him. He walked him, and that is the 41st walk for Kemp, the league leader. It'll bring up Milk May. Who's up among the leaders in batting percentage? Milt is the number four in the list. Batting 341, seven homers and 21 runs by the end. He's had a hit in each of his uh, in four of the last five games he's played. Kim Bond, he's the first runner for either team today. He's at first base, one man down, no score, second inning at Fenway Park in Boston. Now May digging in the infield and double play depth against him. There's a slow curve that hangs inside, ball one. Kendall holding on the bag with Kemp. Hobson's just slightly back a third and wide over there on that side. May swings, and it's a short pop-up into right field. Here comes Evans digging in. He won't get it. Feels it on one out. Throw to second, and safe is Kemp. It was close. Kemp had to hold up to see whether the ball would drop or be caught. It fell back of Remy in front of Evans. Evans picked it up on one hop through to Burleson, and uh, Kemp was almost out, and then he went over the bag, and the Burleson made another tag at him and uh, almost got him coming back. But he's safe, and the Tigers have their first hit. They've got two men on and one man out. Kim 
Corcoran will be at the plate now. The Tigers have a scoring opportunity off Louis Tiant. Corky hitting 221. No home run, seven RBIs. Infield halfway up on Tim Corcoran. The outfield is straight away on him. It's the set by Tiant. The veteran right-hander holds it at the belt. Now pitches, and Corcoran swings at the high fly ball to right field, not deep. Coming over to right center is Evans. He makes the catch, and the runners have to hold on. Short fly to right retires Corcoran. Two out, two on. I believe it up to Phil Mankowski. Phil Mankowski. That's the first outfield put out by Boston. Mankowski uh, batting 258 and against uh, Boston pitching hitting 333. He's had three home runs uh, this year and nine runs better than. Man on second, Kemp. Man on first is May. Two outs, no score, second inning. Tigers at bat. Here's a curve in for a strike, the overhand curveball. What uh, some folks used to call the drop. Yankees lead Toronto there in the third inning now in New York, 1-0. Mankowski waits on the next delivery from Louis Tion. Swings and pops it foul. It will be out of play, I believe, over back a third and into the seat. About uh, seven or eight rows in. Gentleman from Lowell uh, ended up with that one. Two strikes to count on Mankowski. Tigers are still the tops in team batting in the American League, despite the fact that uh, this week has been a very unproductive week for them with the bat. They're hitting 282. Tiant ahead of the hitter, Mankowski. Uh, slows his pitching pace, goes to the stair step, set position at the mound, holds it at the belt, and delivers. It's a swing and a foul away. From the back of third, Hobson chasing, but it's off the facing of the roof and then down below. It's been talk here about expanding uh, Fenway Park, adding uh, seats in the what they call the upper deck. It's really not a deck. It's just a rooftop with some uh, Skyview boxes set on top of the roof. Tion ready to work again on Mankowski. And Phil swings and bows it away. Still two strikes on him. Monday night, the family night at the ballpark in Detroit at Tiger Stadium, and that means that the head of the household pays five dollars, and it's only a dollar and a half each for everybody else in the family. Designated uh, seating in the upper deck, and game time on Monday will be 8:40. Still two strikes on Mankowski, waiting on uh, Louis Tiant's next delivery to him. He takes a wide one. One ball and two strikes on Manco. Freddie Hatfield coaching down at uh, third base. Dick Krzyzewski coaching at first. Dick's uh, family is with him here in uh, Boston for the weekend. Fiat uh, ready. He sets on the mound. Now pitches. It is a swing and a fly ball at the right field. Deep. Evans going back. He'll have room, I believe. He's there. Makes the catch. In front of the warning track as the wind held that hard hit ball up. Enough for Evans to grab it and retire the side. No runs. One hit. No errors. Two Tigers left at the end of an inning and a half. Detroit nothing. Boston nothing. When your car needs an oil change, chances are what you say is change the oil which is all you need to say unless you want to make a change for the better, namely, 
New Ultra D motor oil from Marathon. Marathon's new Ultra D motor oil is a special blend of natural and synthetic ingredients that's really different from conventional blends. A special blend that means improved engine protection for you under all kinds of weather and driving conditions. New Ultra D motor oil has special anti-wear additives that protect the critical parts of your engine longer than conventionally blended multi-grade oils up to 15,000 miles. Better motor oil means a better running engine every time you drive your car, wherever you drive. Make a change for the better with New Ultra D. A change for the better from the people who do it better. Marathon Auto Company. Come the Red Sox to bat now, and uh, Mr. Thomas McCarthy delivers a few warm drinks here to the radio booth. Tom has been around Fenway Park now for 45 years. Knows his way around here. Steve Rosemont on the mound now, ready to deal him in. Uh, the Bostons are coming to bat in their second, and the game is scoreless. Had a nice visit with uh, Joseph Warren. Uh, Joe Warren and Mike Page have uh, come up in their automobile from Detroit, Michigan to see the Tigers in action uh, during this series. Oakland and Chicago have started out at Comiskey Park, Chicago, and they are escorted at the end of one inning. Here's the veteran Carl Yasinski stepping in against Dave Rosemont. Carl batting 279, three homers, 24 RBIs. No score, second inning in Boston. They're pulled around the right on him in the infield and the outfield. And he backs away from a Rosma fastball. Ball one the count. Carlton Fisk will follow. It is now bright and sunny and most of the clouds have blown away. The Rose pitches and Yaz takes the ball outside. 2-0 the count on him. Yusinski swings at the bounding ball to first. Thompson comes up with it, makes the play unassisted, and there's one away. Here's Carlton Fisk. Eddie Yost, one-time Tiger, coaches a third. Johnny Pesky, who also played for the Tigers, managed in their farm system. Coach for Ralph Houck in Denver, coaching over at first base. Johnny was telling us Houck used to get mad at him. He stopped Tony Kubek after an inning, delayed Tony in, in going out on the field and uh, talked to him in a fatherly way. I said, let him go out there. You can talk to him later. Here's Fisk at the plate now. And he takes a slider over for a strike. Outfield around the left on the right hand batting Fisk. And he swings and there's a little looper in the center field. It'll drop in for a hit. The first runner for Boston. He hit that ball on the handle of the bat, but he got over the infield and dropped in front of LaFleur, the center fielder behind the second baseman Whitaker. Oh, the hits are even. Uh, no runs, one hit, and no errors for each side. And here is Butch Hobson, the right-handed batting third baseman. Hobson hitting 279, eight home runs, and 29 RBIs. Ross was struck out one, not walks anybody and allowed one hit. Infield and double play depth on Butch Hobson. And he takes the slider wide from the Rose. Ball one. Thompson holding with Fisk at the bag. Here's a fastball high. Two and oh to count on him. Double header here tomorrow. Billingham and Slayton against Ripley and Wright.
He takes the ball over but low. This is the fastball. Three and oh now the count. Jack Brohammer waiting at the on deck circle. Roseman steps off the mound, rubs up that ball a little bit. Hobson uh, digging in at the plate, waiting on three and oh. He swings and it's a high fly ball to the right. Crawford fighting the sun is under it and makes the catch for the out. Fisk holding halfway goes back to first base. That one held up by the breeze, too. Here's Jack Brohammer stepping up with two out of the man on. Jack, the best painted batter with a 283 average, one homer, six runs batted in. Brohammer. A year ago, the Tigers had won 17 and lost to 23 at this stage of the season. Right now, they are 24 wins and 16 losses. Pretty good turnaround in a year. Brohammer takes a wide one low and away on the left hand batter. No score in the second inning with the Red Sox batting. They've got Fisk at first and two outs. He swings and rolls a foul over toward uh, Johnny Pesky. Come out to Tiger Stadium next week. Be sure to pick up your Tiger yearbook, one of the finest editions of that publication that we've had. They're on sale right there at the ballpark. Biographical sketches and pictures of your favorite Tigers. And a lot of uh, very fine statistical information. One and one, the count on Bohammer. He backed him away with an inside curve. Two balls and one strike on Jack. Trammell pulled over to his glove side, almost back of second base at shortstop. Brohammer cuts it, a fly ball to center field, right center deep. LaFleur there has it, and the side retires. No runs on the one hit, the widow errors, and one man left. That's the end of two, Detroit nothing, Boston nothing. It's time to batter up during your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth Dealers third annual honorary Tiger Bat Boy contest. This is Ernie Harwell. This year, 22 Detroit area youngsters will be selected from each Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealership to become honorary Tiger Bat Boy. It's easy to enter. If your boy or girl is between the ages of 8 and 14, bring him or her into your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer before May 31st to register. Each youngster must be accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or old. On June the 5th, there will be a drawing to determine the winning bat boys. Then 22 games will be set aside to honor the winners. Each winner will receive a simulated Tiger uniform and tickets to the game for the family. So, batter up. Bring your youngster into your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer and sign him or her up to be an honorary Tiger bat boy. There's no obligation, and we'll even give your child a free Tiger iron-on patch just for registering. Stop in today. This is Dale Conquest with the WJR Sports Step. In the year 1880, nine balls were required to walk a player, and it didn't happen often. Tigers move into bat now in their third inning against Boston. No score in this one. It'll be Alan Trammell lead off against Louis Tiant. No runs and one hit and no errors on each side. Made a report from New York. The Yankees are leading Toronto one to nothing. They've taken that game into the fourth inning. Cleveland at Baltimore. More no score there in the third. And at the end of two, Oakland leads Chicago one to nothing. Story in the paper here in Boston this morning that Charlie Finley is trying to get Joe Coleman back from the Blue Jays after 
sending uh, Joe to the Canadian club. And that caused a lot of discussion on the Tiger bus coming over here. I didn't mean it, Joe. All is forgiven. Please come home. <laughs> Minnesota leading uh, Kansas City at the Minnesota 1 0 at the end of one. Seattle and Texas play tonight. Milwaukee, California play tonight. All the National League games are night games except one, uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco, and that one will start later in the afternoon. Here's Trammell to try to get it going. Outfield a little bit to the left on Allen. He's hitting 288 with one home run and six runs batted in. He'll be followed by the top of the batting order, Ron LaFleur. Then it will be Whitaker. Nothing, nothing in the third at Fenway Park. Trammell takes a slow curve. It's over, but it's slow. Ball one. Turned out to be a very pleasant afternoon in Boston. Bright and sunny now. Still a little bit on the cool side. Here's the ball outside. It's 2-0 oh, to count on Trammell. The motion by Tiant. The pitch is on the way. It's been too close around the knee. Three and all oh, the count on him. Well, the Yankees have been coming on strong, and they're going to reactivate the Mrs. Smith on Monday. He's coming off the disabled list. Probably uh, pitch Monday evening. There's a strike called on Trammell. Talk that uh, Catfish Hunter may have to go back on the disabled list, however. Three and one, the pitch coming up now to Alan Trammell. He cuts it, a bombing ball up the middle, grabbed by Burleson to his left, guns it over the first in time. Good play by Burleson to get Trammell. Great. Here's LaFleur, who bounced the third, his only time at bat. Outfield a little bit to left on Ron. In uh, Baltimore, they played him to hit the ball to right field. Up here, they're playing him uh, a little bit toward left. You stripped you almost straight away in center. He swings, hit one, right at call. Here he comes, and he grabs the ball on the run toward the diamond. That was a sinking line drive, a handle by Yastrzemski. Stepping up now, two out, the base is empty. Well, Whitaker. Sweet Lou bounces to second of base from uh, Remy, Whitaker. his only time at bat. Louis Tiant trying to beat the Tigers the second time in two meetings. Wines and pitches, there's a high curve he held off, ball one. Outfield to left on Lou. Low and away, a fastball, 2-0 to count. Breeze seems to be coming uh, from the right field corner and blowing a little bit across toward left. Swing and a foul fly, hits down past third in the seat. Not getting around on the fastball from Louis Tion. Louis checks out his sign with his catcher Carlton Fisk and ready to go to work again. It is a 2-1 pitch to Whitaker. He swings and fouls it away again. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Workers of the world arise with J.P. McCarthy in the morning music call. Join him Monday through Friday morning at 6 right here on WJR Radio 76 in Detroit. Tion ready and delivers, and Lou swings and fouls another one away. This will be a high pop-up that'll drift into the seat between home and third.
No score, third inning in Boston. The Tigers batting, the bases are empty. They've got two away. He swings and rolls a foul over toward the Tiger dugout. Trying to get out of the way of an inside fastball. He's defending himself on that one. Now well, Whitaker steps in again. Here's the motion and the pitch to him. Swinging a bounding ball over the head of Teahot. Remy charges, gloves it. Here's the flip the first. He got him by two steps. The Tigers go down to one, two, three. In the third, we go to the last half. The third, Detroit nothing, Boston nothing. pointed out that the third base coach of the Red Sox here is Eddie Yost, the one-time Tiger. Eddie, uh, of course, was known as the walking man in his day in Major League Ball. He and uh, guys like Eddie Stanky and now people like Steve Kemp of the Tigers, Jim Rice of the Red Sox, get on base frequently. That's one of the most important statistics uh, that both show in the daily average of every year, the really fine ball players wind up with a high on-base average. Joe Morgan, Rod Carew, another couple of excellent, excellent examples. But the record for getting on base, and for that matter, getting around them, belongs to none other than Babe Ruth. In 1923, Ruth reached base over 54% of his appearances at the plate. Again, this year, Ruth has Ready to go to work in the third inning with Boston coming to bat. Game is scoreless. Each team has one hit. Neither team's made an error. And uh, Dwight Evans had a couple of home runs last night and had uh, one against the Tigers in Detroit. Will be the leadoff man against the Rose. The Boston hit belongs to Carlton Fisk, a little Texas League single in the second inning. Now the Tiger hit came off the bat of Milt May, a little fly ball in the short right field. Well, the two hits, uh, neither one of them uh, a screamer and one for each side. Here's Dwight Evans stepping in. Jam packed house again at Fenway Park on a bright, sunshiny Saturday afternoon in May. Hit eight home runs down the last 20 games, uh, Evans. And swings and misses on one right of the hand. Outfield to left and deep. He's hitting 275. Roseman's slider is low and away. Evans has 18 runs batted in. number eight in the lineup. There's a foul back to the TV booth. One ball, two strikes. The count of the right fielder, Evans. Men at the knees, close stance hitter, leaning in, waiting on Rosemary. Here's the pitch. He swings a broken bat ground to hit toward travel. He charges, gloves it. Here's the throw to first. Got him by three steps. The ex-National Leaguer now, Fred Kendall, steps up. He's playing first base. Right hand about it. At the Yankee Dorado game is in the fifth inning. The Yankees still hold a one-nothing lead over the Blue Jays. You've got Oakland and uh, Chicago posted as 1-1 now in the third. There's a fastball at the shoulder, ball one. Here's the motion by Rose. The pitch is swung on the bounding ball to Mankowski. He has it. Guns it across the diamond to Thompson. And Kendall is out on a routine grounder. 
That'll make it two down and bring up the top of the batting order, Rick Burleson. Number seven. Here at Fenway Park, they have a new-fangled uh, scoreboard. Uh, they put up a picture now with the batter and his batting average. They'll have the messages and uh, advertisements on it, also replays. But they have kept the old scoreboard that is uh, up against the wall in left field, where they keep the score by innings, also have the ball and strike and out count. Plus, they post the American League game. No National League scores except that a flash on the new board. There's a strike called on the Burleson. Nothing, nothing. Boston batting in the third. Rosemar winds and pitches. It is a high fastball, one and one. Tough uh, little hitter, Burleson. He had three hits last night. Stands a good way to the plate. And takes one on the outside corner. One and two, the count on him. Rosma has his sign from Milk May. The pitch on the way. Swing a little looper, hit the right field. Glove by Thompson, a great... Catch by Jason Thompson as he reached out in right field at the edge of the grass there and grabbed that ball in his mid. He almost lost his balance. Held on the baseball and the side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left for Boston. At the end of three, Detroit nothing, Red Sox nothing. No charge checking. Other banks make it tougher. City National makes it easier. Now, while other banks are increasing the minimum saving balance you need for no-charge checking, CNB lowers it with combo checking. Nobody, but nobody has got, so City National Bank has got... That's right. Some banks are raising the minimum savings requirement to a whopping $500, but CNB lowers it to $200. A $200 minimum balance in savings or a $200 minimum balance in your checking account and you check without charge. $200 in savings or $200 in checking. And you write all the checks you want without charge. All your checks without charge. Other banks make no charge checking tougher. Combo check it makes it easier. Who's got it? Nobody. A city national bank. Member FDIC. This is Jim Garrett. Learn fire safety and fire prevention. Call the Detroit Fire Department's Community Relations Division, 224-2035. A veteran right-hander and a young right-hander dueling away here. No score. Rosema and uh, Tiant matching pitch for pitch. The total is even at the end of three innings at Fenway Park. The Tigers no runs, one hit, no errors, and Boston exactly the same. Rusty Staub will lead off for Detroit, and it's our pleasure now to join you folks, and we'll all tune in on Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, thank you. Rusty has hit safely in 13 of his last 14 games, including the last six in a row. But he was put out by third baseman Hobson his first time up here this afternoon. Stop having a little conversation with Fisk before he settles into the batter's box. Second baseman Remy pulled around toward first on the edge of the outfield grass on the right side. Here's the windup by Piot and the first pitch. A little high to Rusty. He'll be followed by Thompson and Kemp. Tigers going with all those left-handed batters against the right-hander tee out today. Stop takes, low and away. Stop hitting 3-0-3 at the moment. Still up among the leaders and runs batted in this season with 31. He swings, there's a base hit to left center field. Over to cut it off is Yaz. And Staub will settle for a long single. Uh, Rusty gets his first hit, and the Tigers second off Tiant. First real solid hit. Like the 
first real uh, solid hit of the ball game right there. There's Jason Thompson. Uh, Jason uh, came up to lead off the second inning and swung at the very first pitch. Hopped it foul to Fisk. Thompson showed his uh, power to the opposite field last night just as Rice did by going up into the screen above the green monster, the wall in left field. No score here in the top of the fourth inning. The pitch upcoming from Peon to Thompson. Here it is. There's a strike. He got the breaking ball in. Very knowledgeable baseball crowd here at Fenway Park always. And always a very, seems like always, at least in recent years, a very large-sized baseball crowd. Thompson swings and misses. Two strikes on him. He foul tipped that one into the mid of Carlton Fisk. A lot of folks come down from Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. That's where the Red Sox are perennially drawn from. Get some folks from Rhode Island. A big holiday weekend and Cape Cod is Nothing but wall-to-wall -wall people this weekend. There's the set, the pitch to Thompson, high and inside for a ball. Some of the Yankee broadcasts are uh, beginning to come into New England now and uh, competing with the Red Sox broadcast. And uh, the old staunch Red Sox fans are resenting it. Here's the set now by Tiot. The pitch. Swung on a top foul. It might be catchable. Fisk comes back, but nope, it's going to be on the screen. Just out of his reach. Well, I'm sure you're familiar with the comeback story of Louis Tiot. Most people in baseball have just about given up on... Uh, on Louis after he lost 20 games back in 1969 with the Indians. Went to Minnesota. They released him. He uh, wound up uh, disappearing from the majors for a year. And then uh, Boston picked him up in late 71. Gave him a trial. And he was the comeback pitcher of the year in 1972. Won 15 games that year. Won 11 games in the last two months and has been a staunch uh, pitcher for them ever since. Here's the pitch. Inside to Jason. Count even now. Two balls, two strikes on Thompson. Stop at first. Nobody out here in the top of the fourth inning. No score. Louis looking in at Carlton Fisk. Getting a sign. Stop. Takes his lead. The Step ladder set the pitch high for a ball at the full count. That one seemed to get away from Louis. Louis' second full year at Boston uh, found him becoming the first 20 game winner for the Red Sox since Jim Lomborg turned the trick back in 1967. And he won 22 games the next year, followed by 18 wins, then 21 victories in 1976. Last year, kind of a down year. As Louis won uh, 12 and lost eight. The pitch is swung on and fouled back up this way off the facing of the roof deck. The sky view seat, they call them here at Fenway Park. Count remains full on Jason Thompson. Stretch by Tion. Stop goes. It swung on and missed. Here's the throw to second. Safe at second. Stop gets the stolen base. How about that? That's Rusty's third of the year. Well, it's a strikeout of Thompson. But Stop got a good jump on Tion. Despite that uh, peculiar motion of his and 
wound up with his third steal, and that stolen base by Staub will send a $25 gift certificate from Acme Sporting Goods to the Livonia Explorers at all three Acme stores. You get it for less, or they give back the difference. So Staub is at second with uh, Steve Kemp now stepping in, and time is called. Fisk has gone out to have a word with Louie. Strike out of Thompson is the first of the ball game for Tion. Well, let's see. Rusty has picked up. I said three without even looking at the stat sheet. But that is true. He did not. He's not been caught. He picks his spot. Bob had one stolen base. Last year, the year before, three is first year with the Tigers. The pitch to Kemp is a slow one that stays high. Ball one on Kemp. Steve walked his first time up. His 41st base on balls this year. This is game 41. Uh, he's taking the walks at a record pace. So look to second. The pitch to Kemp. Hi, 2 and 0. That was the fastball from Tiot. Tigers, for the second time in the ball game, have a man in scoring position at second. They had two on with one out in the second inning and could not score. Here's the 2 0 pitch to Kemp. Ball three, that off-speed breaking ball, and uh, he's lost a little control of it right now. That stayed in high to Kemp. So three and zero count on Steve. We'll look to second by Tion. Let's see what he gives him. Swung on, a drive to deep left field. Rice goes back. He's in position to make the catch. He does on the warning track. And Staub gets back to second base. Well, they let Kemp hit away on the 3-0 from Tion. Figured that it had to be something pretty good. And uh, Kemp, who's been hitting to left field all year long, hit that one uh, fairly well. But Rice had room to move in front of it as well. Just in front of the wall. Two down now with Staub still at second, and the batter will be Milt May, who had a pop single his first time up. Milt hitting 349 with that uh, hit in the second inning. Not playing on a regular basis, but being platooned for the most part. And once in a while, he qualifies for the, that leaderboard that you'll see published. Here's the pitch. Swung on a ground ball. First baseman uh, Kendall makes the play unassisted. Well, Kendall continues to excel in a position that is not his regular spot. He's a catcher normally, but he's been doing a good job at first. He retires the Tigers. For Detroit in the fourth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left after three and a half innings. It's still the Tigers nothing, the Red Sox nothing. You're trying to steal home in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. Here's the pitch. Who was the youngest player to play in the World Series? While you're thinking about it, why not have a cool, refreshing Labatt's blue? It was Fred Lindstrom of the Giants. He was only 18 in 1924 when he hit 333 against the Washington Senators, including four hits in a single series game. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt's. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. For beer at its finest, get your hands on Labatt's. It's Canada's number one beer as fresh and crisp as where it comes from. On 
Dave Roseman delayed a little bit in his warm-up tosses here before the bottom of the fourth inning. Milt May had to get his equipment on, and uh, so Dave held back in the dugout for a while. Milt had bounced out to end the top of this inning. Roseman has struck out one, has not walked anybody, and has allowed a Texas League single in the second inning to Carlton Fisk. Certainly one of the interested viewers of the uh, video of this ball game today would be Tiger coach Jim Hegan and his wife Claire. Jim is back home in Swampscott, Massachusetts, recovering from that heart attack sustained back in April. And, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, talked to Buddy LaRue, the uh, one-time trainer of the Red Sox, who's now one of the general partners, one of the owners of the Boston Club. Buddy still has his health buildings around the, the area, and he said that Jim is going to be checking in this next week to begin his recuperative program uh, with Buddy LaRue. And it is hoped that Jim will be back for the Tigers yet this season. Tigers looking forward to his return, and I'm sure Jim is as well. Here's Jerry Remy leading off the Boston fourth inning against Dave Roseman. Wind up on the first pitch. He takes it low for a ball. Remy choked up, looked like he wanted to lay it down. Mankowski came in from third. Bill is playing in tight. He's on the infield grass. Remy, a left-handed batter. Ball two, again a little low. Remy ranks third in the American League in the hit column with a total of 52. game streak coming into the ball game. Grosma delivers. There's a strike. Now the wind up by Dave. His pitch is swung on a bouncer to Thompson. He'll drop it and make the play unassisted at first. So Remy is out bouncing out to the Tiger first baseman. It'll bring up right. And he always draws a reaction here in Boston. Rice struck out swinging his first time up. Leading the American League in home runs, RBIs, run scored, total hits, total bases, and slugging percentage. third and batting average coming into the ball game. Here's the first pitch to Rice. Swung on and fouled behind the plate. Now Rice had a couple of home runs in the four-game series in Detroit last weekend. Hit one in the opening game last night. On a limited competition between these two ball clubs, the slugging outfielder has already collected three home runs. up by Rosemont. The pitch to Rice. Ground ball to short. Trammell waits for it. Scoops it up. Fires to first. He got him. And there are two down in the fourth inning. That'll bring up Yastrzemski. Carl bounced up to Thompson his first time up. Carl playing in center field again here this afternoon. This is the final day of the three-day suspension for the normal center fielder, Fred Lynn. Uh, he'll be available tomorrow. Half swing, I think he fouled it away, and it came off Milt May. That's it. Strike one. Now, wait a minute. The board has gone up with the ball. Oh, wait. Oh, we got uh, confirmation one way or the other from plate umpire Larry McCoy. Dave Phillips down at third. Dave did not like what Milt Wilcox said uh, to him in the eighth inning last night. Rarely will you see an umpire run out the mound like he did. Inside and low. It's a 1-1 count. It's being corrected now. 1-1 count. That first pitch was fouled off by Yaz. The 
pitch to Yastrzemski. Swung on, a hard smash, one hop to Thompson. He knocks it down, picks it up, makes the play on Yaz, and the Red Sox go down one, two, three. After four innings of play, it's still the Tigers nothing and Boston nothing. Folks, it's me again, your exhausted man about town, your exhausted roving reporter, bringing you up to date on what's happening in the Tri-County, Ann Arbor, and Ypsilanti areas. Boy, am I exhausted. Do you know how many marathon dealers are having marathon man tire days? There must be 29 of them, and I've been to all of them. That means there are 29 marathon men eager to offer you Firestone tires at unbelievably low prices. I mean, these guys are going all out for tire sales. They've got popular polyester cord Firestone Deluxe Champion tires priced at... Can you believe it? And Radio Deluxe Champion bike walls start at... And that's all you pay for a Firestone radio. Why, it's unbelievable. The thing for you to do is drive into your participating marathon deal. Remember, there are 29, and I've been to every one of them. Get a super deal on a Firestone tire. Me? I'm exhausted. I'm going to have to go back to the man in the booth. Catch you later. See Ron Kerner at Kerner's Marathon, Rochester, and Bill Norman at 12 and Sheener Marathon in Warren. WJR congratulates three new members of the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. Former Tiger Al Kaline, University of Michigan Athletic Director Don Canham, and Father James Martin of Detroit Catholic Central. Gentlemen, we of Radio 76 salute you. Leon is uh, just beginning to uh, warm up here after four innings of play. Leon stays in the dugout uh, for some time after an inning has been completed. He's not going to run out there. Part of the reason being is that uh, this game is on uh, a national TV. And they're taking extra long periods of time between innings. So uh, Louie does not want to get warmed up. And then after, uh, after using up his quota of warm-up pitches, uh, have to stand around on the mound uh, while they wait for the commercial to get done. So he does his waiting where he's much more comfortable in the Boston dugout. And then he trots out, having used up some of the between-inning time. Here on the Tiger fifth inning, it'll be Tim Corcoran, Phil Mankowski, and Alan Trammell, the first three batters to face Tion. No score thus far. The Tigers have two hits, one by May, one by Staub, and the only hit for the Red Sox off Dave Roseman, a Texas lead single by Carlton Fisk. Here's Corky. Tim had a little pop fly to Evans in right field his first time up. Corcoran has really never uh, found the stroke that he had in spring training this year for the Tigers. As the season got underway, dropped off. There's a fly ball lifted to short center field coming on as Yaz. He may not get there. He makes the catch. Good running catch. Yastrzemski's made a couple of fine catches already in this game. That'll bring up Mankowski. Uh, Phil uh, came up with two on, two out in the second inning and drove Evans to the warning track in front of the bullpen with his long drive. We'll wind up by Peon at the pitch. A little high for ball one. Standing on the first base side of the rubber, into the motion, he whirls and delivers. Strike called. Now that turn, pivoting the body so that he's actually looking towards second base. But well, he'll come from all sorts of directions, too. Jammed him with a fastball. It's a 2-1 count now on Mankowski. Ready the pitch. He got the slow one in there for a called strike. Two and two on Phil. And Mankowski was uh, not going to have anything to do with that pitch. One out, nobody on. Top of the fifth inning, no score at Fenway Park. There's the pitch to Menko. He lays off. It was low for the ball, a full count. Now, Tiant has walked one. 
And he's managed one strikeout. On deck is Trammell. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Phil. He swings, drive to center field. Jastrzemski backing up, backpedaling, flips the glasses down, makes the catch. They were playing him right that time. Two down in the fifth inning. And Kowski's hit the ball uh, quite a distance into the wind both times, but has nothing to show for it. Here's Alan Trammell. Alan Trammell. Young man from San Diego, uh, up once That's against Dion, bounced off the short. There's the windup and the pitch. He takes a strike, shortened up, but laid off. Now well, Alan uh, has been facing almost exclusively right-handed pitching all season long. He's in that uh, platooning setup of Ralph Hogg. Fly ball lifted to left center field. Yastrzemski is calling for it, backing up, pounds the glove, makes the catch. And the Tigers are down one, two, three. In the top of the fifth inning on three fly balls to Carl Yastrzemski. So after four and a half innings of play, it remains the Tigers nothing, the Red Sox nothing. It's time to batter up during your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth Dealers third annual honorary Tiger Bat Boy contest. This is Ernie Harwell. This year, 22 Detroit area youngsters will be selected from each Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealership to become honorary Tiger Bat Boy. It's easy to enter. If your boy or girl is between the ages of 8 and 14, bring him or her into your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer before May 31st to register. Each youngster must be accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. On June the 5th, there will be a drawing to determine the winning bat boys. Then 22 games will be set aside to honor the winners. Each winner will receive a simulated Tiger uniform and tickets to the game of the family. So, batter up. Bring your youngster into your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer and sign him or her up to be an honorary Tiger bat boy. There's no obligation, and we'll even give your child a free Tiger iron-on patch just for registering. Stop in today. The young man from Grand Rapids, Dave Rosemont, dueling away with Louis Tiard here. It's no score through uh, four and a half innings. And David has looked very sharp today. He was not nearly as sharp in the second game of the doubleheader last Sunday when uh, he left after four innings of play. Rosemer has struck out one, has not walked anybody, has not gotten behind the hitters. He's had good placement for his pitches. Rosemer continuing to loosen here uh, before the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Fisk, Hobson, and Brohammer, the three scheduled batters for the Red Sox. Fisk owns the only hit for Boston. His uh, Texas League uh, looping single to center field uh, with one out in the second inning. Number 27. What a favorite here in uh, New England, Carlton Fisk. Brought up in the area, still lives in the area, has native of New Hampshire. As I said before, a lot of the fans who come to the games here at Fenway Park come right down from New Hampshire. Here's the windup and the pitch for Rosma outside for a ball. We've got a station break. I see now it's gone by some distance uh, beyond the 330 mark, so got a station break coming up. Here's a pitch from Dave. Swung on and fouled away. One and one on the Carlton Fist. Doubleheader tomorrow. Jack Bellingham and Jim Slayton are they two Tiger pitchers. Ralph Hawk using nothing but right-handers against the Red Sox in this four-game series. Alan Ripley and Jim Wright Two right-handers to oppose Detroit. Well, high for a ball, it's a 2-1 count on Fisk, leading off the fifth inning for Boston. Dave looking in, getting the sign from May. 
into the windup. Here's the pitch. Strike. He caught the outside corner. This was leaning, but he held off. Two-two count on Fisk. Those were taking a little more time between pitches. Delivers. A pop foul out of play. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Jimmy Lance leads your bunch to lunch. Monday through Friday mornings from 10 to noon here at America's great radio station, WJR Detroit. Time has been called. Something uh, came out of the stands, I guess, out in the left field. Alan Trammell had to go out and retrieve it. My goodness, is that a, a bottle? Yes. A bottle had been thrown out into the outfield. All right, ready to go again. A 2-2 count now on Fisk. Here's the wind-up, the pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to a deep shortstop. Back underneath it is Trammell. He makes the catch. High pop-up. Back on the outfield grass. One down on the fifth inning. Number four. That'll bring up Hobson. Hobson's been plagued by elbow problems. His right elbow is still bound. He had the DH for a while. Missed one game completely. Here's the wind-up of pitch to Hobson. He takes it outside. Butch gradually getting that swing back where it was earlier in the season. And there's ball two to him. Breaking ball low and away from the Rose. One out, base is empty here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The wind-up by Rosma, he pitches. Ball three, low and away. Well, Rose has, the Rose has not walked anybody. Here's the next pitch. There's a call strike, Hobson taking. After five innings at Yankee Stadium, it's Toronto one and the Yankees one. Cleveland ahead of Baltimore, three to nothing in the fourth inning down in Baltimore. Ground ball through the box in the center field, under the glove of Trammell. Base hit for Hobson. So Hobson picks up the Red Sox second hit of the ball game. And it will bring up the D.H. Jack Brohammer. At Chicago, they're in the fourth inning. The White Sox leading Oakland now, two to one. At Minnesota, where they had a rainout last night, the Twins leading the Royals, one to nothing in the third inning. A couple of games tonight in the American League. All but one of the National League games are night games. Here's the set. The pitch to Brohammer moved him back. Ball one. Had to buckle out of the way that time. Rosemar has uh, shackled the Boston hitters for the most part. The fans making some noise here in the first in the fifth inning with Hobson getting a one-out single. The pitch. Low. It's two and zero. Oh. May fires the ball back to Rosma. Bo Hammer hitting 278. He takes ball three. The Grands making some noise here in the first and a fifth inning with Hobson getting a one out single. The pitch. Oh, it's 2-0. Oh. They fires the ball back to Rosma. Bo Hammer 
hitting 278. He takes ball three, low and inside. Time is called. May is going to go out there. We'll talk with Roseman. Well, he got behind on Hobson. And on a 3-1 pitch, Hobson ripped a single up the middle. Now he's behind on Brohammer again with a 3-0 count. Jack, a left-handed batter. There's a case where a man can make it. Uh, being picked very low in the draft, he was the number 32 choice back in 1967 by the Indians. There's a pitch to him. Takes a strike. That one just found the outside part of the plate. The crowd thought that wasn't a good pitch. Three balls and a strike now on Brohammer. Hobson at first. He goes. It's a check swing foul. Full count. Hobson continuing on to second with a slide. Full count now on Brohammer. Well, they sent Hobson on the 3-1 pitch. Brohammer used to be a switch hitter, but he uh, gave that up. Oh, midway in his rookie season and has been batting strictly left-handed ever since. Hobson uh, leaning at first now. He goes again, the 3-2 pitch swung on and fouled again. And they couldn't hang on to that one. They keep that ball in play. Hobson now uh, getting some wind sprints. Don Zimmer has sent him on both of the last two pitches to Brohammer. On deck is Dwight Evans. The lead by Hobson. He takes off. There's a line shot down the right field line foul. again this time uh, Brohammer got out in front a little too far and lined it foul down the right field line so Hobson comes back to the bag calls time he wants his shoelace uh, tied uh, he does it himself he's not asking somebody else to do it for him Johnny Pesky watching the procedure ready to go again Brohammer with a 3-2 count let's see what happens one down let's see if Hobson goes again he's leaning and he goes. The pitch is swung on another foul. This one into the stand down the right field side. <laughs> Hobson is getting a workout. Rosma getting the sign from Milt May. 3 2 count. Hobson with his lead. He starts to lean again. He goes. The pitch is swung on and fouled away again. This time behind Pesky, the first base coach. Pesky pointing uh, where the foul line is to Brohammer. Put one on the other side of it. Oh, Hobson uh, trying to catch his breath back at first base now. He has gone five straight times. a 30-yard dash down to uh, second base. Roseman looks over the shoulder, steps off the slab, and bluffs Hobson back to the bag. Here's the set. Hobson goes. It's swung on and ripped foul. Boy, that was just outside the bag. Six in a row. And he's fouled away. Every time Hobson has been running. This time, Hobson really took off. He was uh, around to the shortstop position before he made the turn to head back to first base. Here's the pitch. Hobson goes, and it's ball four. No swing on that one. Oh, two on with one down. Well, Brohammer, a foul 
throwing a ball off, and finally there was one that he knew was out of the strike zone, and he took it. the chest protector inside his shirt. The pitch is uh, taken for a strike. Oh, that was an off-speed breaking ball. Good pitch from Roseman to Evans. Evans, I don't know whether he was mad at the caller himself that time. Shaking his head, he gets back into the batter's box. Hobson at second, Brohammer at first, one down. No score here in the fifth. There's the two-strike pitch. He struck him out swinging. Well, that's a big strikeout for Rosma, his second of the ball game. Dave is not a strikeout pitcher, but sure can use him sometimes in a position particularly like that one. Uh, here's Fred Kendall. Kendall getting a chance to play with the injury to George Scott and the suspension of Lynn, which moved the Yaz off first. And Kendall, uh, who's normally a catcher, Playing plenty of good first base for Boston. He takes one a little high for ball one. Two years ago, with San Diego, he caught more uh, games than any other catcher in the major leagues that year. A high 2-0. Oh. Well, Rosema fits so well to Evans giving him some low stuff, breaking balls, and uh, now with Kendall, he's come high twice. So May goes out to have a word with him. Everything's even on the board. No runs, two hits, no errors for both clubs. Now the set, the pitch. Way outside, 3-0. and oh. On deck is Rick Burleson. Uh, somewhat like the sixth inning last evening. Red Sox loaded the bases for Burles and he got one of those pop singles to uh, break the tie. Turned out to be the game-winning run. Here's the pitch. Strike call. Kendall starts the first. It'll be a 3-1 count on him. Now he's going to have a word with Larry McCoy. two out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And a 3-1 count now on Kendall. Roseman's got to come in with it. Ground ball to short. Trammell waits for it as it goes to second to get the force on Brohammer. And that's all for Boston. So Roseman works out of trouble here in the fifth inning. No run. One hit, a walk, no errors. Two Red Sox left on base. After five innings of play, it's still the Tigers nothing, the Red Sox nothing. They came from across the sea, from Japan, Germany, England, Italy, bright and eager to show what they could do. They were foreigners in a foreign land. But one thing that was true in the old country was also true in the new. You can't buy a better club for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy a better club no matter where you are than champion. Number one in the world. Number one in your car. Imports from every country find America is the land of opportunity. The opportunity to use champions. The world's best-selling spark plug. The plug that wins more big races. For imports, you can't buy a better plug than champion. You can't buy a better plug than champion. You can't buy a better plug than champion. 
This game is being brought to you by Labatt's. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt's. By marathon dealers and distributors, people who got together to do it better. By the Greta Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealers, who've got Horizon Motor Trend's Car of the Year. By Champion Spark Plugs, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. By the Detroit News, for the first good news in sports every morning, read the new Detroit News AM edition. By City National Bank, where you can get combo checking. And by Little Caesars Pizza, a winner any way you slice it. Now, more Tiger baseball action with Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. Piot still loosening before uh, facing the Tigers here in the sixth inning. We've had the infield groomed after five innings of play. Jack Morris is at work in the Tiger bullpen. I don't know whether Roseman is experiencing some stiffness in his shoulder again or what. Morris is uh, not in the uh, immediate rotation. All right. Now Jack's going to have to get back into it here pretty quickly. The Tigers in the span of eight days, uh, playing a total of three double headers. The third one coming up tomorrow afternoon to wrap up this series. Here's Ron LaFleur at the top of the batting order to lead it off in the sixth for Detroit. Ron is 0 for 2 today. First pitch from Teot. Slow one is swung on and popped in the air to short center field. Yes, with a little bit of a late break on it. And it drops in off the glove of Remy. LaFleur takes the turn but heads back to first base. We'll wait for the scorer's call. That was a terribly tough chance for the second baseman Remy. Yeah, seemed to hesitate when the ball was originally hit. And it will be a hit for LaFleur. A pop single for Ron LaFleur. A third Tiger hit in the ball game. And it brings up Lou Whitaker, who twice has grounded out to Remy at second. No score as LaFleur gets a pretty good size lead at first. Watch out, Ron. Tion walks it down the ladder to the belt. Holds and pitches. And it is missed on a punt attempt by Whitaker. He couldn't find it. One strike on Lou. Now Whitaker checking all the signs being flashed by Freddie Hatfield, relayed from the Tiger dugout. Kendall holding on the bag at first with uh, LaFleur. Here's the set now by Louis. He goes to first and back is LaFleur. And there's that motion that the Cincinnati Reds thought was an illegal one. Because it bounces down. But it is always constant with Louis. LaFleur bluffs going. The pitch taken low and away for a ball. And Fisk was springing up ready to throw. 1-1 one, one count now on Whitaker. They play <coughs> Whitaker shallow. And uh, play him to the left side. So he cannot pull T on Here's the pitch to the plate. Strike. He caught the outside corner on Lou, who didn't like the call. Now he nods his head. Sweet Lou. Oh, talking to himself down at the plate right now. Ball and two strikes on Whitaker. The floor gets his lead. And he draws the throw, gets back with a couple of big hops. No score, top of the sixth inning. Teant and Rosma dueling away. Now the floor, hunched over. He goes, the pitch is swung on, bounced up the middle, right at the bag at second. The only way they're going to get him is a double play. That would have been a base hit. Had LaFleur not been running on the pitch, but then, you know, how are you going to tell? That ball went right through the box. 
right to the bag at second base where Remy had gone to cover for a throw on LaFleur. And there he was waiting for the ball to come to him. He just taps the bag in front of LaFleur and got Whitaker easily at first for the double play. A 4-3 double play and they're two down with nobody on. Well, those are the breaks when things are going a little badly for you. It'll happen like that. A hit and run result at that time in the double play. Staub is one for two. Rusty takes the strike. The pitch from Tiant. Swung on and popped up foul. It'll be out of play. Back behind the plate. Red Sox in first place by a game over the Yankees. The Yankees tied with Toronto today in their single game at Yankee Stadium, one to one in the seventh inning. Tigers not getting some of the hitting breaks that they uh, had earlier in the year, although a couple of their hits today have been kind of fluky, a couple of pop singles. Here's a pitch from Tiot. Oh, he threw himself off balance that time. That was a motion. I don't think Tiot expected him to have. He seemed to jerk his head on his shoulders as he turned to second. And uh, when he wheeled around, he had uh, thrown himself kind of off balance. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on, a fly ball, lifted to left field. Rice backs up, but he should have the room. He does. Waits on it, has it, and that retires the side. Well, the Tigers get their leadoff man on base for the second time of the ball game. And cannot move him around. And for the Tigers in the sixth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base after five and a half innings. It remains the Tigers nothing, the Red Sox nothing. Hello, J.P. McCarthy here, inviting all you baseball fans to join us for a great day of golf. For a great day, really, the... Sixth Annual J.P. McCarthy Police Athletic League Golf Invitational out at the magnificent Walby Golf and Country Club in Bloomfield Township on Long Lake Road between Franklin and Middle Belt Roads. We will have 46 of the top touring golf professionals on hand, including Tom Watson, Hubert Green, Lanny Watkins, Jerry Hurd, Doug Sanders, Chichi Rodriguez, so many others, along with former President Jerry Ford, who makes his first appearance in Detroit since he... Uh, uh, since he was the president of the United States, old friend Jackie Gleason, Joe Garagiola, and many, many surprises, too. You help cops help kids when you pay your $10. Cost you $12 the day of the tournament. You can get tickets all over the place at Hudson Stores, Wards, J.C. Penney's, Capper & Capper, Detroit Bank Corporation, Banks, your friendly life insurance agent, and at the Lindell AC, too. Dave Rosma has left the ball game. Uh, Dave apparently coming up with that stiffness in his right shoulder again. The last time out, he worked just four innings against Boston, although he uh, was behind at the time, and the Red Sox had hit him pretty hard. Today, Rosma pitched very well, allowing just two hits, a Texas League single in the second inning and a single in the fifth inning, and that was it. He walked one, struck out two but had shut out the Red Sox over five innings, but Rosemay is out of the ball game now, and Jack Morris has taken over as the Tiger pitcher, a right-hander who also has had some shoulder problems at uh, the end of last season and uh, through the beginning of this year. Oh, There's a couple of sore arms uh, pitching for the Tigers here today. Morris takes over trying to keep the tough Red Sox hitters at bay in the sixth inning. Manual face will be Rick Burleson at the top of the batting order. For Morris, only his fifth appearance of the year. Second time, he's worked in relief. As a cut and a miss. Morris, of course, has that uh, fastball when he's right. He's got an excellent fastball that just makes his superb changeup that much better. There's the windup by Morris, the pitch. A little high with the change that time, one and one on the Burleson. Morris pitched that one game in relief against the Red Sox, who came on uh, a 
week ago and was ineffective in one inning against Boston. He allowed four hits and three runs. Burleson cuts and misses. It's on the change that time. Jack still does not have a decision this year. Started three times and then uh, had that one inning of relief. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. And Morris has been kind of in and out when he has pitched. He pitched uh, April 22nd, uh, April 26th. And then went a long time between stints, uh, May 15th and then uh, May, or rather May 18th and then May 21st. The pitch to Burleson fouled out of play behind first. This will be over the roof. Jack's had some control problems uh, while he has pitched this year. He swings, there's a pop-up to short left field, backing out is Trammell. He's got it, and there's one down in the sixth inning. That hit very high in the sky, and uh, Trammell got out there in a hurry. That'll bring up Jerry Remy, hitless in two trips against the Tiger starter, Rosemont. Remy fly to left and bounced to first. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Warren Pierce is ready to give you a line, 875-4476, your direct line to involvement and entertainment. Weekday nights at 7 here on WJR Radio 76, Detroit. Remy takes a call strike on the first delivery from Morris. The pitch swung on and fouled it back out of play into the Skyview seats behind third. He was jammed on the handle that time. Remy hitting 287. No homers, 16 RBIs. Morris delivers high with a fast one. One-two count now on Remy. Here's the pitch from Morris. Swung on it, popped foul, or popped down the left field line. Trammell racing near the foul line. Now Kemp calls him off, makes the catch. Their territory by a couple of steps. Well, there are two out on a couple of pop-ups. And here's Jim Rice. Right. Greeted by cheers as well he might be for his exploits this year and the past couple of seasons. 0 for 2, however, against Rosemuth. Morris kicks and fires. Strike. He put the outside corner on right. That one a little too far outside. Ball on the strike now on Jim Rice. Now Cleveland has bounded up to a 6-1 to one lead over Baltimore in the sixth inning. There's a long fly ball to left field. That could be gone. Kemp goes back to the wall. Turns around. It is up to the screen. A home run. And Boston goes in front one to nothing. That one was a towering fly ball to left. That just got caught in the screen above the wall. Right with his 17th home run of the year. It's one to nothing Boston. up the Fenway Park crowd here in the sixth inning. Here's Yastrzemski. He takes the strike. Kemp back to the wall to the scoreboard then turned around and backed away as though to play the carom but there was no carom for him. There's a smash up the middle behind second. Trammell has it. The throw to Thompson. He got him and that's all for the Red Sox. But Jim Rice did his thing in the sixth inning against reliever Jack Morris. 
home run to put Boston in front. One run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on base. And after six innings of play, it's now the Red Sox. One, the Tigers, nothing. Senior Louis Tion now has a lead here at Fenway Park thanks to the high fly ball that just caught the screen atop the green monster, the pale green wall in left field. And Tion with 100, uh, well, let's see, at 166 complete games uh, coming into this season. So far this year, uh, Louis pitched one against the Tigers last Sunday and that was his first complete game of this year ready to face them in the seventh inning holding the upper hand now one to nothing both teams with three hits but Rice got his out of the ballpark Jason Thompson will lead off the seventh for the Tigers and back for the play-by-play -play. here's Ernie Harwell Thanks, Paul. Hi again, everybody. It's been a tight one all the way. That home run by Rice, the difference in the battle so far. And here's Thompson at the plate. He's fouled the catcher, Fisk, and uh, struck out. 0 for 2 for Jason. Fanned on a 3-2 pitch in the fourth inning. Tion winds and delivers. It is a changeup fouled away in the dirt and down toward uh, Suzuki, the first base coach. White Sox are leading Oakland at the end of five, two to one. Toronto and the Yankees are tied one to one in the eighth inning. Cleveland had a Baltimore in the seventh, six to one. Now, Tion checks his sign with Fisk, ready to go to work again. Fastball foul away, down past first base. Strike two, the count on Jason Thompson. It'll be Thompson, Kemp, and May. Try to get it started for the Tigers. They have been in a batting swap almost this entire trip. Pitching has been adequate, but the bats have not been ringing as they were in the earlier part of the year. Now the strike two pitch. Side arm curve stays outside on the left hand, about a one and two of the count on Jason. Kemp waiting on deck. The outfield is slightly toward right. The wind is blowing across from the right field corner toward the left. Bright sunshiny afternoon in Boston, and Tiant has his sign, goes to work. It is a strike saw, he got an overhand curve across, and Thompson is called out on strike. Second time he's fanned, and uh, Tiant has two strikeouts. Here's Kemp, he's walked and fired the left, 0 for 1. Of the Tiger hits, they've had three of them. LaFleur with a single, Staub with a single, and May with a single. The Tigers got Kemp as far as second base in the second inning. They got Staub to second base in the fourth inning. Three, 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 five. Three, 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 five is the state attendance. 33,335. Change up is high. It was over but high on Kemp ball one. One to nothing. Boston leading on the home run by Rice. It came in the sixth inning off for Lever Morris. Rosemary started. Tiot's been in there all the way for the Red Sox. Here's a strike call to curve. Let her high and through the strike zone. One and one. Milt May waiting on deck now. The Tigers have had their Steve Baker throwing in the bullpen since this inning got underway. Young right-hander who pitched the other night in Baltimore. Here's the pitch. Swing and a bounding ball. Hit up the middle. There goes the shortstop. Rosemary is down away from him. Off his glove and on into center field as he uh, reached back at second base to get the ball. It took a skip past him and the Tigers get their fourth hit. Man on first, one man down, and Milk May will be the batter. May single, little pop fly that dropped into short right center in the second inning. He bounced out to the first baseman, Kendall, his next time up. That was in the fourth inning. One to nothing, Boston. The Tigers are batting in the seventh against Louis Tion. Corcoran waiting on deck. May the batter. Infield up halfway on Milk. 
He takes a strike on the outside corner. Fastball. Larry McCoy, the plate umpire this afternoon. Palermo, then Kinger, and Phillips are on the bases, reading around from first to a third. Outfield plays the May a little bit to right, and they're deep on him. He swings as a drive to right field, coming hard. Evans can't get it. It's in for a hit. Corpin turns and holds at second base on the right field single. The ball whipped in by Evans to Burleson, who cuts it off behind the mound. And the Tigers now have two men on and one away. It's only the second time in the game they've had two men on base. Earlier in the second inning, they had uh, their best threat, but they walked to Kemp and a single by May. Now they've had a single by Kemp and a single by May. And that'll uh, put it up to Tim Corcoran, the right fielder. Flat out twice, once to right, once to center. Tigers have hit uh, eight fly balls that have been caught by the Boston outfielders so far. Man on second, man on first. Bill Campbell, the right-hand relief ace for the Red Sox, beginning to heat up their elbow pad. Tim Coffin waiting on the start of Murray Tiant to get busy again in the seventh inning. It'll be Mankowski next. Here's a set by Lewis. And he pitches. Here's a curve that is over but low. Ball one. Hobson wide of the bag at third. The other infield is the back. Kendall playing a deep first base and behind the runner May. That's the left hand of batting Corcoran waiting at the plate. One and all, the count on Corky. He takes a strike. That was Tion's fastball busting over, and the count is one and one. One run, three hits, no errors for the Red Sox. The Tigers, no run, five hits, and no errors. One uh, blow is the difference in this game. A home run by Rice is 17th. It came in the sixth inning with two out and nobody on off the start of Roseman. Off the uh, really pitcher Morris, I beg your pardon. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch coming up to Corky. He cuts and fouls it away right above our roof. One ball, two strike count on Tim. Each bullpen busy now. Baker throwing for the Tigers. Campbell is throwing for the Red Sox. Don't see a lot of one to nothing games in this ballpark. This is touted as a hitter's paradise. Deion is ready at a one-two count. Here's the pitch. He swings and there's a fly ball down the line and right. It's going foul and may reach the seat. Evans comes over. He can't get it. It's about two rows in. Jut down and uh, parallel the foul line with only a space of uh, four or five feet there between the stands and the foul line. That ball fell in right at that spot. Double header tomorrow, the same two teams go at each other. Family Tigers had on home and entertained the Baltimore Orioles on the Monday night, family night at the Tigers Stadium. Corcoran waiting on another pitch from Louis Tiant. Here it comes. He swings and there's a fly ball to set it. Just simply going back. He see if he's there. He waits, makes the catch. Here's the tag at second. And Kemp takes third. May holds it first on the long fly to straightaway set it. The Tigers now have runners at first and third. Two out of the seventh inning. They trail one to nothing. And Mankowski up there to try to do something about it. Mankowski's yeah. batted twice. Hit the ball pretty well, but he's flat out each time. Once to right, once to center. The Tiger run at third is Kemp. The man at first base is May. Seventh inning. One to nothing, Boston. 
Trammell waiting on deck as Keon goes into the set position to pitch to Phil Mankowski. He delivers. It is a ball outside on Mankowski. Got a word now from the Minnesota that the Kansas City Minnesota game has been postponed because of rain. They got it started, but couldn't get past the second inning. Rained out in Minnesota. Now, Louis is ready, delivers. Here's a strike call. He got a slider over. One and one on Phil Mankowski. He'll be followed by Trammell. The man at third for the Tigers. Kemp is the trying run. Mays at first base, edging off. Kendall playing behind him. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Swung on and hit foul out of play. Swung late on the fastball and fouled it on the third base side. One run, three hits, no errors for the Red Sox. Tigers, no runs, five hits, and no errors. It's the seventh inning at Fenway Park. Second game of the four-game series. The outfield now a little bit to left. They've got the Yosemite over to the left field side in center on Phil Mankowski. And the Tion is ready again. He pitches. It is a strike. Tiger trainer Bill Bean that Dave Rosen's shoulder stiffened uh, up on him again. He threw 70 pitches, and uh, when the shoulder stiffened up there, Ralph Houck uh, felt that he had to bring the Rose out and bring Morris in. That was in the uh, sixth inning. Well, Rose were running into the same problem that he's experienced uh, since the last part of last season. A little tightness in the shoulder, and he had to leave the game on account of that. Some other scores now. Oakland leads Chicago 3-2 in the eighth inning. Toronto and the Yankees are tied 1-1 in the eighth. Cleveland ahead of Baltimore 6-1 in the eighth inning. Two night games in the American League. Seattle at Texas. Milwaukee at California. Kansas City and Minnesota postponed because of rain. They're all night games in the National League except for the Los Angeles-San Francisco game that starts in the late afternoon. Here's Fisk to lead off against the Native of St. Paul, Minnesota, Jack Morris. Of the thin right-hander going to work. He's working in relief. Rice is home run off Morris in the sixth inning is the only run in this game. And here's Fisk with a single of the pop to shortstop. He takes a slider outside from Jack. Ball one. Double-headed tomorrow. The Tigers and the Boston conclude their four-game series here at Fenway. Hope you'll join us for those two games. Swing a fly ball and into short left center field. LaFleur is camping under it. He has it on the way. Butch Hobson has fly to right and singled up the middle. One for two for Butch. On the Boston third baseman. Spreads out of the plate, right hand about her against the right hand of Morris. Now he steps away just about the time Jack was all set to go into his windup. Backs him off with an inside fastball, ball on the count. The Baker is still throwing in the Tiger bullpen out in deep right field. Morris winds, so it is. Here's a tap foul in the dirt over toward the Tiger dugout. One and one is the count on Hobson. In the doubleheader tomorrow, Jack Billingham will work the first game against Al Ripley. Jim Slayton against Jim Wright in the second game. There's a ball outside. It is a ball in too close. Three and one, they count on him. Boston.
Jackson leads one nothing seventh inning. They've got a man out and nobody on the bases. Morris kicks and deals. Here's a high pop up into the infield. Whitaker calling for it near the bag at second. He has it, and there are two away. Jack Brohammer, the designated batter, left hand hitter, steps up. He has the fly to center, drew a walk on a 3 2 pitch. It's a ball on outside on Jack, ball one. Red Sox in the lead, one nothing on the home run by Rice. They're in the seventh inning now with the bases empty. Two out, there's a strike. One and one, they count on him. Dwight Evans, the Boston right fielder waiting on deck. Here's the wind up by Morris, he pitches. Swing at a miss. Brohammer swung too early. One ball and two strikes to count on him. Morris checks his side with May, works again. Here's a ball in the dirt. Count is 2 2 on Brohammer. The Boston hits a home run by Rice. Singles by Fisk and Hobson. There's a line shot for a hit in the center. To his left, a little bit comes LaFleur to field it. Brohammer has a two-out single off Morris here in the Boston 7. That'll bring up Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans. Evans against the starter, Rosemar, bounced to short and struck out swinging. Rosemar got him on an inside fastball the last time up. Low stance hitter Dwight Evans and uh, a lot of power in that bat. Brohammer off the bag at first, doesn't go. The pitch is popped foul and it'll be out of play, I believe. Here comes May back. It drifts on the screen. Shadow uh, creeping over part of the field now. It's in the uh, left field corner down there. They got one shady spot. Then the shadow of the light tower gets out and left in front of the auxiliary scoreboard. And the light tower shadow uh, in between first and third on the infield grass. Everything else is in the bright sun here. Here's a high foul. That'll be out of play on the first base side. Strike two, the count on Dwight Evans. Morris didn't like that ball that uh, McCoy put in play once another one. When the Tigers come home, their first action will be Monday night against Baltimore. It'll be family night at the ballpark. Hope you'll be out there to see if the Tigers try to get back at Baltimore. Oreos took three out of four from them. You remember at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore earlier this week. Strike two pitch, here it comes. He takes the curve outside. Wouldn't go for that one, a little tester. One and two, the count on Evans. One nothing, Boston leading in the seventh. They've got Brohammer at first and two out. Thompson holding on the bag over there with a the hammer. Not much of a lead for Jack right now. And the pitch, Evans swings with a bounding ball to third. Gloved by Mankowski, long throw to Thompson. He's out of the side, retired. Good play by Mankowski. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and one man left. That at the end of seven at Fenway Park. Boston won Detroit nothing. Batter up during your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth Dealers third annual honorary Tiger Bat Boy contest. This is Ernie Harwell. This year, 22 Detroit area youngsters will be selected from each Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealership to become honorary Tiger Bat Boy. It's easy to enter if your boy or girl is between the ages of 8 and 14. Bring him or her into your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer before May 31st to register. Each youngster must be accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. On June the 5th, there will be a drawing to determine the winning bat boys. Then 22 games will be set aside to honor the winners. Each winner will receive a simulated Tiger uniform and tickets to the game for the family. So, batter up. Bring your youngster into your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer and sign him or her up to be an honorary Tiger bat boy. 
there's no obligation, and we'll even give your child a free Tiger iron-on patch just for registering. Stop in today. Princeton University has the distinction of introducing the first college cheer way back in 1871. That's the WJR Sports Staff, and I'm Jim Forrest. Lance Parrish is out at the on-deck circle, and he'll be batting now for the number nine hitter, Chamel, here. In this uh, eighth inning situation, with the Tigers trailing their Boston rivals one to nothing. Rosemar and Tion drilled away, nothing, nothing, through the first five innings. Morris came over, took, uh, took a charge in the sixth inning on the mound with the Tigers, and with two out, Rice touched him for his 17th home run of the season, and that, so far, is the story of this uh, afternoon contest in Fenway Park. One nothing. Boston with an eighth inning now, and Parrish will be coming to bat. Five hits for the Tigers, four for Boston. Neither team has made an error. Parrish hitting 235 home runs and 12 runs batted in. 17 hits and 11 of them have been for extra bases. Five homers, five doubles, and one three-bagger. Larry McCoy wants to inspect the baseball that Keonts are going to use. He does and says it's okay. Later report now, Toronto and New York are one-to-one uh, -one in the ninth inning in New York. Cleveland leading Baltimore six-to-two in the ninth inning in Baltimore. Oakland ahead of the Chicago, three to two in the eighth at Comiskey Park. Here's Parrish to the plate. And he took a curve in on the inside corner. Moved out of the way, and the curve broke over and caught the corner on him. It'll be LaFleur to follow. That's the top of the batting order. And then the number two Whitaker. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Keon quickly ahead of the pitch batter Parrish. Strike two, the count on land. Tigers need an instant run or two here. They trail one to nothing behind the Red Sox in the eighth inning. Seahawk mixing his pitches uh, beautifully. Here's the wind up in the pitch. He takes the side arm curve low. Threw that one off the hip by third base. One and two, the count on Parrish. Hobson uh, deep and near the line with a right hand batter at the plate. And Tion delivers again. There's a foul out of play. Tion and Rosma are alike in one respect in their pitching. There's lots of, of arms and legs in the, the two wind-ups. Makes the ball hard for the batter to follow it coming out of the hand. Now they wind up in the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him on a fastball. Parrish took a hefty cut, but goes down swinging. That is the fourth strikeout for Tion, and he picked up three of them in the last yeah. inning in a fraction. Here's LaFleur coming to bat. He bounced the third, fly to set it, and single. The Tigers in a team batting slump haven't been able to break out of it. Tion winds and delivers. It's the ball outside. Hitting seems to be a contagious thing with the team. A couple of guys start to do it. Everybody else does. And it works just the opposite way. Now they wind up in the pitch. LaFleur looks at a ball that misses the inside corner 2-0. And, Tion checks his sign with this, the catcher. Kicks and deals. Here's a high foul fly that'll reach the seat down the right field side. That's Paul's the station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Jay Roberts joins you as you meet your new day on Night Flight 76, evenings at 11.30, here on the Goodwill Station, WJR Radio 76, Detroit. On the count on uh, LaFleur. Now Keon ready again. Winds and gives him a fastball over but low. Three and one the count on Ron. Whitaker waits on deck. 
One nothing, Red Sox leading. Toronto now leads the Yankees four to one in the ninth inning. That's what occasioned that cheer here at Fenway. Toronto four, New York one in the ninth. LaFleur leaning in, waiting on the 3-1 serve from uh, Louis Fiat. It's on the way. He swings it to Chopper over the mound. Wilson near second, gloves it, throw to first, he's out. His shortstop coming far to his left to get the hopper near second base. That'll make it two down and we'll leave it up to Whitaker here in the Tiger 8. Whitaker has hit the ball uh, three times to the second baseman. In the sixth inning, he got a tough break. The hit and run was on. The four broke on the pitch. Whitaker hit a smash right up the middle, but uh, Rennie was going over to cover the bag as uh, LaFleur took off. He caught the ground at second base, touched the bag and threw the first to the DP. There's a line shot to left field. Nobody will get that one. It's the base hit. Whitaker wraps a single to left, makes a turn and holds on at first for two down. That is the sixth hit for Detroit. Here's uh, Rusty Staub, the designated batter stepping in. Uh, Whitaker on at first base, two away. one nothing Boston, eighth inning. Staub played straight away by the Red Sox outfielders. The infielders are back. Whitaker trying to edge off at first. He's got a pretty good-sized lead. Kendall holding on the bag with him. Sion steps and pitches, and it is a ball outside on Rusty, ball one. Last we had on the Oakland White Sox game, Oakland leading Chicago 3-2 there in the eighth inning at Comiskey Park. one nothing here, Red Sox lead in the eighth. Whitaker draws a throw, gets back safely. Tiaw threw it in the dirt, but Kendall scooped it up. Jason Thompson at the on-deck circle for the Tigers. Tiaw ready, holds it at the belt. Whitaker edges off a little bit farther. Doesn't go. The pitch is a curve. It's in too close on stop. Two and oh, the got on Rusty. 33,335 paying to see this game in the Saturday sunshine at Fenway Park. And it's been very, very close. Only the difference from the home run by Rice in the sixth inning with two outs. One nothing Red Sox. Seahawks pitches. There's a foul out of play. Two and one, they count on Rusty Stop. Hope you'll join us for the doubleheader tomorrow. It'll be Jack Billingham and Jim Clayton against Al Ripley. And Jim Wright. All four of those pitchers are right-handed. Whitaker with a little longer lead at first base. Bob waits on the 2-1 delivery and takes a high curve 3-1 on Rusty. Now, Keon's falling up on his pitching face a little bit here in this eighth inning situation. Bob uh, waiting on the 3-1 delivery from the Boston right-hander. Here it comes. Swung on, this is a fly ball at the right field. Evans goes back, he'll have room, and he makes the catch. A little double with the sun, but he got the ball in deep right field. The side retired. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left. That at the end of seven and one half innings, Boston one, Detroit nothing. I have a message for my friends in the advertising biz around town. Of course, the rest of you can use drop if you like. Here's the message. You guys and gals who produce TV commercials for your clients might not be aware that right under your very noses is one of the most modern, best-equipped videotape facilities in the United States. I'm talking about Wilding Video on Cadu Road. If you do...
Wagner, their new Tiger shortstop, as the Boston bat in the eighth inning. They've got a one to nothing lead over Detroit. That one came on the home run by Rice in the sixth inning, his 17th of the season. And it came off pretty pitcher Jack Mars, who had uh, come in in the sixth. Relieving the start of Rosemar. Rosemar had his shoulder tighten up on him again and was taken out. And after Mars retired the first two batters, Burleson and Rennie, Rice did a fly ball in the screen over the famous green monster left the wall here in Boston. And that right now is the story of this uh, muscular soap opera in Boston. Here's Kendall coming to bat. He's uh, 0 for 2. Mounts the third, about the shortstop for a fourth out. Got a couple of finals posted here now. Toronto 4, the Yankees 1. And Cleveland uh, defeats Baltimore 6 to 2. Bounding ball to third. Mankowski gobbles it up, fires it across the top, it in plenty of time. One pitch and one away in the Boston eighth inning. Top of the batting order for the Red Sox. It'll be Bolton, who's gone 0 for 3, bounced to short, popped up to first base, and popped up to short. The Boston hits a home run by Rice and singles by Fisk, Hobson, and Bohammer, who had an order in the middle part of uh, Don Zimmer's lineup. Here's the pitch now, and uh, Bilson looks at a flat at first strike. He's out of the batter's box, now gets back in there to face Jack Morris. Bilson looks, it's the strike called outside corner. Two strikes on Bilson, the Mankowski backs up at third base. One run for it, no errors for the Red Sox. Of the Tiger totals, no run, six hits, and no errors. Stay tuned uh, after the broadcast is over for the scoreboard show with Paul Carey. And a good bit of action, especially in the American League this afternoon. And he'll be telling you about it. Here's the strike two pitch. Swung on and fouled in the seat. The line drive back at first. and digging in again against Morris. Here's the motion by Jackie Pitches. Here's a fly ball up to the right center going over the floor to the glove side. He's there. He has it. That's two out for the Red Sox in the eighth. And the batter will be Jerry Rennie. Rennie is hitting streak on the line, 12 in a row. He has gone 0 for 3 in this game. Morris has allowed two hits since he took over, the home run by Rice, and a two-out single by Brohammer. There's a fly ball lifted in the center before they're waiting, has it, and the side goes one, two, three in the Boston eight. Here comes the ninth inning, Red Sox one, tight nothing. Can you afford to throw money away at the supermarket, in your car, where you bank? City National Bank knows every nickel counts. That's why there's a big difference between City National and those other banks that charge you for writing checks. Nobody, but nobody has got what City National Bank has got. City National Bank saves you money again with combo checking. Keep a minimum of $200 in checking or savings. You write all your checks without charge. All your checks without charge. Combo checking. No other bank in Michigan has it. No statement fees. No charge for checks. Don't throw your money away on annoying service charges on checks. Come on in and open a City National Bank charge-free combo checking account now. You got it? Nobody but City National Bank. Also available at National Bank of Rochester and First Citizens Bank in Troy. This is Jim Garrett. Leader Dogs for the Blind provides for all eligible blind people. For information, write Leader Dogs for the Blind, Rochester, Michigan.
Hang on, here come the Tigers, the bat of the ninth inning. They've been blanked here at Fenway Park so far by Louis Tiant, who scattered six Detroit hits. And the moves into the ninth inning with a one nothing advantage. Bill Cavill and uh, Tom Bergmeyer, right-handed and left-handed, throwing in the Boston bullpen. It'll be Thompson to try to get it started for the Tigers. He's been stymied at the plate by Piant. He's not hit a ball fair yet. He fouled the catcher fifth and struck out twice. So for three for Jason. After Thompson, it'll be Kemp, who has a walk and a single. And Milt May, who has a couple of singles in three turns. So it's the middle part of the batting order, the fourth, fifth, and sixth hitters. They try to get the Tigers moving in the ninth inning. Outfield deep, a little bit to right. Thompson about ready to step in and face the right hand of Louis Tion. Double header here tomorrow. Jack Billingham and Jim Clayton against Al Ripley and Jim Wright, four right handers, as he started in the two games. And the Tigers head home to open up a weak home stand. Opening against Baltimore. There's a half cut. It is ruled of all. He checked his swing in time. That home stand begins on Monday and goes through Sunday. And it'll be Baltimore, Milwaukee, and Minnesota coming in to visit the Tigers. There's a change up that hits the mark. One and one, the count on Jason. Kemp is waiting on deck. One to nothing, Boston in the ninth inning. Keon has his sign from Pitt. The 1-1 one, one pitch. It's a ball outside. Two and one. Keon missing the corner with that one. ready to go again. He winds and delivers. It's a swing little pop foul. Fair ball over to third. Hobson is there. Makes the catch. Get that one down on the handle of the bat and pops to Hobson. Well, Kemp will be the batter. Here's that final now from uh, Baltimore. Cleveland won it 6-2. And Grubb hit a home run. Clyde the winner and Flanagan uh, the loser. Here's Kemp, who has walked by the left and single. one nothing Red Sox in the lead. Deont has been brilliant this afternoon. Here's a foul out of play. It'll be on the third base side. In the second inning, the Tigers got Kemp as far as second base. In the fourth inning, the Stop Singleton stole second. In the seventh inning, uh, Kemp with one out single and took third on a single by May. But was not able to score. So those are the Tiger threats so far. Strike one, they got on speed. He looks for a strike. That was a fastball. Keon came overhand with that pitch. will be the next Tiger batter. One down of the ninth inning, nobody on base. Here's Louis wind up, and he pitches. Swing, a line shot. Base hit, left to the field. Yusinski going to his right, cuts off the ball with his glove and fires it back into Burleson. And the Tigers get another hit. That is the second for Kemp. And here's the other Tiger who has two coming to bat now, Milt May. Kemp's hit is the seventh for the Tigers. They've out hit the Boston team seven to four. But the home run by Rice has the Red Sox in a one nothing lead in the ninth inning. Hits have been pretty well scattered. The Tigers failed to hit in the first, the third, and the fifth inning. But they've had at least one in every inning except those. However, they've had uh, no more than one and only the seventh when they put back-to-back -back singles together by Kemp and May, but still could not score. Here's the set by Tiant, May waiting. And he takes a slow curve that hangs high, ball one. 
McLaughlin, another left hand batter waiting on deck. Boston, one run, four hits, no errors. Detroit, no runs, seven hits, and no errors. Kendall holding on the bag with Kemp. May wait, here it comes. He swings and there's a long foul fly over the roof of the grandstand, pulled way back on the first base side. One man, one, the count on Milk May. Tigers leading the league in hitting. But this past week, they have not indicated that they've got a hitting team like that. They have been shy with the bat. Now here's May to wait on Tiant's 1-1 one, one pitch to him with one on and one out in the ninth. It's a fastball outside, a two and one on Milk. has died down here at Fenway Park now. Kemp trying to edge up the bag at first. May waits on a 2-1 pitch from Louis Tiant. He takes a wide one. 3-1 to count on him. Mr. McCoy out to dust off the plate. Toronto beat the Yankees 4-1. to Clancy, the winner. Figueroa, the loser. Murphy got his save. 55,367 largest in the Major League saw that game. Here's the 3-1 pitch down to Milk May. He takes the strike. He out, hit the outside corner. Now it's a full count on Milk May with a man out and a man out of the ninth inning. Red Sox hanging on to a one nothing lead at Fenway. Kemp uh, edging off the bag at first. Kendall still holding over there with him. Louis gets his sign from Carlton Fisk. Fisk holds it. Now pitches. The runner goes. The ball is outside. It's a walk. So the Tigers have two men on and one man out. And here comes Zimmer out. He's got Campbell throwing in the bullpen. He's had Bergmeier out there. And we'll get a runner. Dillard is coming out the first base. He'll be running for May. The batter will be Tim Corcoran. Zimmer is now at the mound talking with uh, Louis Tion. Fisk is tuned in there to the two of them. That's the second walk off Louis. And Zimmer's going to stick with him. Don has got back to the Boston dugout. Look at 25. Here's Tim Cochran. He's flat out three times. Once to right and twice to center. Well, once again, the Tigers have a couple of runners on. They're second and first. They trail one to nothing in the ninth inning. There's one man down. One home run is the difference in this game. Rice hit his 17th home run in the sixth inning. And that's the way the game has been ever since then, one to nothing. So here's Cochran trying to deliver at least the tying run for the Tigers. Left hand batter against the right hand pitching of Louis T out of the ninth inning. Jump on second. Dillard is running for May. He's at first base. Piant to the set position pitches. It's a high one. Ball one. Kendall playing behind Dillard at a deep first base on Cochran. Wilson trying to keep the run of Kemp close to second base. Now, Tion sets again. And uh, Tim Cochran takes a ball outside, 2-0. Oh. That was the fastball from Louis Tion. Outfield is a little bit to the left, and the big gap for Cochran is between Yastrzemski, the center fielder, 
And the right fielder, Evans. Now the runners edge off a little bit. It's a 2-0 pitch coming up to Corcoran. Peon is ready. He delivers. Here's a ball high, ball three. Mankowski waiting on deck. Three at all. The count on Corcoran. Tim out of the batter's box, getting back in. Louis Tiant has his sign and is set to go again. He pitches. It is a strike on the outside corner. Trying to keep that ball away from Tim. He pitched him outside all the way this turn. And the count has gone to three to one on the Tiger outfielder. Tigers trying to battle their way back. They trail 1-0 in the ninth inning. Waiting on a 3-1 delivery from Louis Tiant. And Corcoran swings and fouls it away. Check his swing on that one. Seemed to be a little bit indecisive. He started his swing and didn't go through with it. Slice the ball on the ground. Foul down toward the Tiger dugout. Well, now it's a 3-2 situation. Runners at first and second, and one man down. And Tiant does not like that new baseball. He wants another one. Larry McCoy tosses one out there to him. Campbell has been throwing in the Boston Bulls and has stopped to watch the action on the diamond. Bergmeyer was throwing along with Campbell a little bit earlier, but uh, he has taken a seat out there. Now we wait on a 3-2 delivery from Tiant to Corcoran. Pitch. He swings and pops the foul. It'll be out of play on the third base side. Back into the seat. Toronto beat New York 4 to 1. Cleveland over Baltimore 6 2. We haven't got anything later from Chicago. It was 3 2 in the eighth inning favor of Oakland. Now we've got something later. And Chicago tied it up and they've gone through nine innings. And they are deadlocked at 3 3. Kansas City and Minnesota rained out after they tried to start it. We couldn't. The other games in the American League are tonight. Seattle, Texas, and Milwaukee, California. So Paul will have details and some more finals for you on the scoreboard show when the game's over. It is still 3-2 on Tim Cochran. Two men on. One man out. one nothing. Boston, ninth inning. He on ready. He sets. He holds it, and now he pitches. It is a bounding ball to second. Remy over to Burleson. One. Rita first double play. The game's over. And Boston makes it two straight over the Tigers. In the ninth inning, no runs. One hit. No errors. And one man left. And the final score, Red Sox one. Tigers nothing. You're in the cleanup spot in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. Here's the pitch. Who played in the most consecutive games in the majors? Why not think about it over a cool, refreshing Labatt's Blue? 